we had this range of data that I turned the filters on and I created a couple of formulas from it. But usually I need to take this a lot further. If I scroll down on this list, I can't see the headings anymore. So I would want to freeze panes. I also would want to format this data. I may want to create some formulas. I don't do all of that individually. What I do is turn it into a table. So the table can provide me with all of the details of working with this group of data. I'm gonna turn the filters off. Just so that you can see, the table will automatically give us filters. So I'm just gonna to go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. I'm gonna click on the icon Table from the left-hand side. It puts marching dashes around the range of my cells. It has a My Data, My Table has headers. I'm just gonna click OK. It automatically has this range of data inside a managed area called a table. It gives you the drop downs for the filters automatically, which of course gives you sorting capabilities. If I scroll down on this list, it freezes the top row. It's going to change it from being A, B, C, D to being the names of the actual columns. And we have a new tab on the ribbon called Table Design where it's going to give you table styles, this gallery of choices for different styles that you can apply. The style that I'm using has every other row a different shaded color. That's called banded rows. That's available in this on the ribbon on this table style options. If I uncheck banded rows, it takes it away. Maybe I want banded columns where it's going to emphasize every other column within your list. Otherwise, banded rows is a great choice, easier to read the information. But it also has emphasis on the first column and or the last column. Whatever you check, it applies. Click it again to take it back off. And one more thing about tables is it has this feature called total row. If I click total row, it adds a new row to the bottom of your list called total, and it's automatically giving you a subtotal in the last column. Every cell in the total row can have a different calculation. By default, it looks at the last column and assumes you want to add those numbers together, which maybe I do. But what if I want to get an average of the quantity? I could go to the quantity column click on the down arrow for the total row and choose average. Maybe I want to get a count of how many total country or how many total rows we have. I could go to a column that has text and I could use the count option where it's going to count how many records we have. So you could use different types of formulas depending on the column of data that you have. The total row gives you the capability of having that. So for me, a table is essential and a table becomes a named range. So if I go to the table design tab, in the table name, I can give it a name and I'm gonna call this company orders. It is now a named range. Just like the other named ranges that we had previously done, if I go to the name box, Here's a list of all the named ranges, and it includes the name of this table, Company Orders. Notice that it also has this visitor data. If I click visitor data, it takes me back to the table coming from the maps worksheet. This is a named range because it's a table. Now, how do I know it's a table? When I'm on any of the cells within this range, I have the table design tab on the ribbon, so I know it's a table. I could have manually added the filters. I could have manually formatted it, but I wouldn't <laughs> because I don't want to have to do that extra work. I let the computer do it for me.